So if you're a fan of Hamilton, you are going to love Mexidus. This groundbreaking musical combines history with hip hop to explore the untold stories of enslaved people on the Underground Railroad to Mexico. Brian Quijada and Nigel D. Robinson give tour de force performances while using live looping to create a musical in real time. Mexidus is now playing at Mosaic Theater on 8th Street Northeast through June 15th. Get tickets at mosaictheater.org. That's mosaictheater.org. Today on CityCast DC, with the long weekend ahead of us, it could be a great time to take a quick trip away from the city. So we thought, what better time to revisit our conversation with travel writer Tim Ebner, where he shares his guide to DC's best day trips. Today's Wednesday, May 22nd. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. So Tim, I know you're a freelance travel writer, and that means you're a pretty seasoned vacationer in and around the D.C. area. We know there are so many options of places folks can check out. So given that, how do you give advice on where people should go in and around D.C.? As a travel writer, I really am fortunate to get to explore the D.C. area all over from the Chesapeake Bay region to the Shenandoah mountain range and everywhere in between. And D.C., is really just, I think, a unique location in that there are just so many different places, whether it's beaches or mountains or countryside that you can easily explore. So when I ask someone when they're interested in traveling, I usually like to ask them what kind of vibe they're going for in terms of if they want a peaceful retreat, um, maybe in the woods or on a hike, or if they're looking for something that's a little bit more fun. It could be something like an antiquing shopping adventure for the weekend Or it also could just be, you know, some beach sun and fun. So I like to ask people what type of mood they're in. And then it usually helps me recommend a destination for where they like, where they might be interested in traveling to. So like a choose your own adventure type thing. Exactly. Yeah. I think travel should always be a choose your own adventure. And I think it should be about exploring, you know, new places. It's about getting out there and really, um, you know, if you're familiar with some popular beach town like Ocean City, Maryland or Rehoboth, Delaware, That's great. And those are wonderful beach vacations. But there's also some really great, more off the beaten path beaches along that coastline, especially when you're talking about getting out there. I think places like Broadkill Beach up on the Delaware Bay, as well as Assateague Island are really fantastic places. They're really quieter beaches. And they're places that I think a lot of people have yet to explore um, from those other bigger beach towns. Oh, I love Assateague Island. I have gone camping there twice. And people are always asked like, oh, you can camp on the beach in Assateague only a few hours away from D.C. And so I love getting to tell them that, yes, that is absolutely something you can do right here. Also an incredible place if you're like me and you love oysters. Um, There are a couple of incredible oyster farms along the coast there near Assateague Island and some great seafood shacks as well as, you know, wild ponies. Like, who doesn't love animals when you're on vacation? (laughs) Animals are like half the fun when you're out there. And these are wild ponies that roam around. And uh, obviously, you can engage with nature and and really see um, wildlife up close. Uh, Obviously, you want to maintain your distance and be respectful of nature. But it's really fun to be in that element, a lot different from being in Washington, D.C., definitely. Yeah. So you've mentioned getting to some of the lesser known off the beaten path destinations near D.C. I feel like when people think about travel spots from D.C., the two big ones that come up are like Annapolis or Harper's Ferry. Yeah, those are both fantastic places to visit. I love both. They're steeped in history. There's tons of sightseeing. Um, But, you know, the other thing is a lot of people do know those destinations. So it tends to be places where you're going to have to put up with a little bit of traffic. It might be a little bit more of a crowded spot. Near both of those destinations, actually, there's some pretty incredible places to visit. And I would encourage people to check other places that are nearby. Um, A great example near Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, um, is really um, Luckett's, Virginia. And Luckett's, Virginia is probably only 30 minutes away from Harper's Ferry. It's more of a farm countryside area. But there really is both great hiking as well as great antiquing and shopping. And so I think it's a place where if you're looking for the similar vibe of Harper's Ferry, you could easily go just, you know, 30 minutes south and find a smaller community 
where you might get to know some people one-on-one. Um, and the same can be said for Annapolis, Maryland. Annapolis is obviously a waterway destination. It's filled with different history for Maryland. But actually, if you just go over the Bay Bridge, I like to tell people to head over to a tiny little fishing town. It's called Tillman Island. Um, and Tillman Island is like a population of 800. It's an oyster and waterman's fishing village. And what's so cool about Tillman is that there is actual history. You can visit the Maritime Museum. You can also visit some of the local shops in town, which have been there for decades. And my personal favorite there is that there's um, the Tillman Island Country Store. It's literally where people come to meet um, to pick up whatever kind of provisions they need for the weekend. But it also has like amazing crab cakes. It has amazing seafood that you can get fresh from the store there. So it's it's just a nice alternative to maybe um, the more popular water side retreats like Annapolis or St. Michael's, Maryland. Let's be real. Lawsuits are not fun. But with Paulson and Nace, at least they're a little easier. Paulson and Nace is a DC law firm in every sense of the word. It was founded here in 1979. The two partners, Chris and Matt Nace, were both born here and are local leaders who care deeply about the DC community. Paulson and Nace handles medical malpractice, wrongful death, and other complex injury cases when someone has been hurt by the negligence of others. And they don't just settle every case. They'll go to court. They'll fight for you. Paulson and Nace has even been recognized as one of U.S. News's best law firms. So if you have been hurt or have lost a loved one because of someone else's mistake or negligence, call Paulson and Nace for a no-obligation consultation. Visit www.paulsonandnace.com or call 202-463-1999. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, and I'm here with Keith, co-star of my upcoming film, If, only in theaters May 17th. Do you want to tell people the big news? All right, I'll do it. Sign up now, and you'll get unlimited for $15 a month in six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan on us. MintMobile.com slash switch. Upfront payment of $45, equivalent to $15 per month. Unlimited over 40 gigabytes per month. Face lower speeds. Videos at 480p. Active Mint customers by 531.24 get six months of Paramount Plus Essential Plan. Auto renews after six months. Offer ends May 31st, 2024. Separate Paramount Plus registration required. Terms and conditions apply if rated PG. I love that we have so many nearby waterways in D.C. I'm a big water person. I love to chill by the water. Um, You've mentioned Assateague Island and Tillman Island. Are there other spots that you'd recommend for folks that want to just chill by some waves? Yeah, you know, it's all about getting out there in the summertime and being by the water, um, however you can do that. And one of the places that I tell people, if you want to skip going over the Bay Bridge, because obviously getting across the Bay Bridge to those beaches is like half of the battle when you're trying to get somewhere like (laughs) Ocean City or Bethany Beach or Rehoboth, Delaware. If you actually just head south um, to the western shore of Maryland, down to St. Mary's County, there's actually some incredible beaches along that stretch of of land. And and there's places like Oxford, Maryland down there where there's um, these sort of more private style beaches, but which are totally accessible to people. And it only takes about 90 minutes to get there, which is kind of awesome too. What I really like is there's an inn down there, a little B&B, and it's called Pier 450. And it actually is a former fishing camp, but it's been renovated recently and turned into this really like hip boutique kind of drive-in hotel motel kind of situation. But incredible because you have your own private beach there, Um, The room rates only run about 150 per night. So, and it's locally owned too. And, you know, there's only about 10 rooms in this resort. So you really feel like you have this place to yourself. Um, There's fire pits and there's plenty of opportunities to get that sort of beach um, experience without having to go say, you know, the three hours trip to Ocean City or to Rehoboth, Delaware. Absolutely. I love that you can give recommendations that are a little bit more accessible. And I guess, how can you get to some of these different places? Are there public transport options or maybe buses or trains? Or do you typically have to have a car to get out there? Yeah, I think, you know, with vacation, we always think about how we're going to get there. And usually that means having a car or knowing a friend with a car or renting a car. That's not always going to have to be the case. Actually, I was just planning my next trip and I'm looking to like do some hiking and notice that I could, from my neighborhood in Capitol Hill, hop on the Mark train or the Amtrak and get to points uh, near Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, 
and Martinsburg, Berg, West Virginia, which was, has some incredible hiking. And you know, that train ride is only about 90 minutes and 20 bucks. So what an incredible way to do a vacation. There's no stress in like having to even drive or get in traffic. Um, and you get to ride the rails along the Potomac River as you travel. To me, that's almost adds to the vacation experience. And it's something that I'm definitely going to be doing soon. Because again, like I didn't even realize that the train was like that accessible and convenient. And the same can be said, I think, for destinations around metro stations. I tell people, even if you only have, say, like a day to do a vacation and it's more of a staycation, consider just getting out of your neighborhood and going to parts of this uh, metro region that you haven't explored yet. For me, Old Town Alexandria is always a great option. It feels like a more small village kind of historic center with a lot of shops and bars and restaurants. So that's always a fun getaway from Washington, D.C., and it's only 20 minutes on the metro. But also just south of Old Town Alexandria is Huntley Bay Meadows, which is a really beautiful park, expansive park with a watershed area where you can do um, bird watching, you can see turtles, and you can see herons. It's part of the Potomac watershed area, but a really peaceful way where you can get within the nature elements and take a little uh, break from the city rush. Yeah, I love that you have options for if you're kind of in a city mood, maybe you want just 5, 10, 15 minutes out of the city that you can, that's metro accessible. Folks can still have like a little mini vacation vibe, even if they're not really going that far from where they might live. I think that's exactly right. Vacations should always be what I say is more of a mindset. People, especially in the moment we're in right now, should feel free to live their best vacation life. Vacationing for me is not how many miles you've traveled or how many time zones or countries you've visited, but it's really about meeting other people and engaging with different communities. So my kind of summer mindset this year has really been, how do I travel, but travel intentionally and do it in a way where it's not going to get um, so much of a hassle experience or, you know, I can get to someplace fast and, and really feel like I'm taking a nice break and, and enjoying myself. Because, you know, a vacation is about de-stressing. Let's, you, you shouldn't have to feel like obligated to add to it just to experience that, right? Totally. I am always thinking about first when I get to someplace, where am I going to relax? Where's my pool lounger? Where's my stretch of sand that I can just kind of chill but also, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about those other add-on benefits of, is there great food? Is there a really cool bar I want to check out? Or a show in town that could be fun to see while I'm visiting a place? When I'm traveling to places, I'm always going to that local bar or that local restaurant in town, talking to the people that I meet. And it's amazing those stories that they share with you. So I think the beauty of travel is that it's such a great way to expand our horizons and our world, and especially in the community that we live. Um, so those are all, I think, really compelling reasons to take a trip. Even local cities around us, whether that be Charlottesville or Richmond, Virginia, or Baltimore, Maryland, these are all places, especially in this um, summertime period of, of August and going into September even, when um, typically hotels will lower their rates for city destinations. Um, because most people are traveling out of town or getting to more uh, beachside areas. So definitely look into cities. I think cities are a great place to do some exploration nearby DC. And we have so many options. And also we're fortunate that they're reachable by many different forms of transportation as well. Yeah. So most of the places that you've mentioned are like an hour or two outside of the city, like Richmond or Charlottesville, which I love. But are there places that are even closer than that? You know, day trips that maybe are just five or 15 minutes outside of the district? Yeah, actually, one thing that I will say is I personally love to camp. My wife, not so much, not much of a camper, um, but I do like being in the outdoors and getting kind of into nature. And what I've realized is that the park systems around us are filled with different camping spots around um, our region, whether you're in Montgomery County or Fairfax County. Um, you can actually find these um, camping sites available all through the summer months. And we're talking only 20 or 30 minutes outside of, of the Beltway, maybe. Um, but it's a great way to be within nature. And if you're a camper like me, you can go and do that, which is really fun. Um, if you're not a camper and you're, you, you know, you're more like my wife who likes to tend to shop and do more fun things, I think, when you're on vacation, cities like Frederick, Maryland, or um, going up to places like Havre de Grace, um, which is just a little Chesapeake Bay town. They, these are places that have incredible 
um, shops, incredible history. You can do some really cool um, antiquing. And actually, um, Havre de Grace is like the decoy capital of the world, which means that they carve these like really intricate ducks out of wood block. And it's like this thing that's carried down through the generations. So there's things like that in these cities that you just like come to find and you're like, these are so unique to this area and this region, and you won't find them anywhere else in the world. I mean, that's certainly unique, <laughs> duck carving. Okay, so of all of the different day trips you've recommended, is there a place that is your particular favorite or that you have a particular fondness or soft spot for? Yeah, so I actually am in love with Tillman Island, Maryland, which we talked about earlier. I think Tillman Island for me is just this magical slice of the Chesapeake Bay the island itself actually sits in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. So you have complete 360 views of the water while you're there. Um, but what I really like about it is it's really approachable from an overnight or weekend stay. There are actually two resorts down there that I would highly recommend people check out. One is called the Wilder Hotel. Um, the other is called the Tillman Island Inn. And both of these places really embrace the outdoors where you are. And they have so many amenities that are filled with different activities. So you can rent kayaks for free. You can rent bikes for free. You can also schedule a trip out on the water with a local waterman and go fishing or go crabbing. Um, so really cool experiences to get your feet wet in the Chesapeake Bay if you've never done that. And anyone who likes seafood, I'm personally like in love with steamed crabs. I grew up in Maryland. It, it's just a part of who I am but they have incredible local fresh produce. So you're getting kind of that great all around trip experience. And for me, the fact that it is kind of this place at the end of the road in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, it means that you're surrounded by tranquility and peace too. So that's what vacation for me is all about. Tim, you're making me want to take a little mini vacation. I love it. Yeah. And you know, travel for me is all about getting out there. You probably can explore someplace in this area that I've not been to. And I think that's the beauty of traveling in your own backyard. You're getting to know all of these smaller towns and places that really add so much to what this region is overall. I think we're so fortunate to live in the greater mid-Atlantic region with so many amazing destinations. Why not like just get out there and exploring? I tell everyone if it's a new place or a new destination. I'm always curious to hear how they've um, enjoyed their experiences because I'm learning just as much from friends who are doing the exact same thing that I'm doing, which is just getting out there and, and exploring your own backyard. Definitely. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. It was great to be here. Okay, y'all, I have a favor to ask. CityCast is doing our annual listener survey, and it would really help us out if you took it please take the survey at citycast.fm slash survey. It will only take you seven minutes max to take the survey. We actually sat down and timed it out. And it helps us learn about you so we can make the show better for you. That's citycast.fm slash survey. Survey takers also have a chance to win a $250 Visa gift card and some very cool CityCast swag. That's citycast.fm slash survey. Even if you took it last year, we will be grateful if you took it again, since we can't reuse last year's data. Thank you so much. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, tell your friend that you can't wait to do a quick getaway with. You can rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then. Bye.